Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in statics and we're going to solve problem 733, okay? It says, determine the internal normal force, shear force, and moment at point D of the two member frame. All right, so what we have in here is that we got two member frame. Well, we have the member frame A, B, and we also have from B to C, okay? And in order to solve this problem, what we're going to do is that we're going to focus on first removing this pin and analyzing the member BC by itself and then analyzing the member AB by itself in order to find the internal forces at point B. And then with those internal forces then we can utilize, we're going to cut at point D and utilize those forces to find the internal normal forces at D, okay? So let's just start with a free body diagram, like always, uh, of my member BC. All right, so my member BC looks vertical like this. Then if we remove this pin, we have to remove this pin by adding two forces. We'll have a BX reaction and we're going to have a BY reaction in here. Also on my point C, we will have a CY and a CX. Now, the distributed load that we have in here, we can convert it into a single resultant load. And this force is equal to the area of this load. So since this is a square, we're going to call F of a square is going to be base times height. Well, the base is three meters. So we got three times the height, which is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. And when we multiply this, we realize that this is equal to 4.5 and the units are going to be kilonewtons, okay? So now we know that this force is equal to 4.5 kilonewtons. And the distance, well, the distance should be exactly at the middle. So from here to here is going to be 1.5 meters. And from here to here, the same distance, 1.5 meters, okay? So... Now that we have our free body diagram, what we're going to be is do is focus on solving for our forces at B. So if we do a moment around my point at C, we won't need CX, we will need CY, and also we won't need BY because it's actually going in the same point of my point C, okay? So let's do that. We're going to do a summatory of moments about my point C. We're going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive. And what do we have? Well, we already said that no CX, no CY, no BY. So we're left with these 4.5 kilo newtons and this BX. So my BX multiplied by the distance. Well, the distance is from here to here. Therefore is equal to three meters. Now, these force, if I'm holding here, this force will want to try to rotate me clockwise direction. Therefore, this is going to be negative. Then we're done with that moment. Then we have 4.5 kilo newtons. We'll want to rotate me counterclockwise. So we're gonna have positive, and then we have 4.5 kilo newtons multiplied by the distance. Well, the distance is 1.5, and all this should be equal to zero. If we solve for Bx, we will have 4.5 times 1.5 divided all by 3. And when we plug this into our calculator, we will get a total of 2.25 kilonewtons. All right, so we found Bx. The next thing we're going to do is analyze our member AB in order to find By. So we're going to do a free body diagram of my member AB. And let's see, what do we have? Well, my member AB looks something like a, an L shape. Let's draw a little bit bigger. And let's borrow the picture in here so we can draw it better. Then at point A, what we have is a pin connection. Therefore, we can replace it with our a, a, AY and AX forces. AY, AX. Oops, let me first draw the force. This is AX. All right. Now, 
we know that the pin at B has to be replaced by BX and BY. However, what would be the directions according to what we're drawing here? So in order for this to be a pin connection, the, we have to draw them at the opposite direction that what we draw them on the other side of the connection. So meaning that our BY is going to be going down in here, BY and BX is going to go towards the loft. So we got BX, okay? Now, the other force that we have in this AB member is this distributed load. This is a triangular distributed load, so what would be this force of this distributed load if we want to make it into a one single force? We have the area of this, which is one half the base, which is three meters as well, times the height, which is two. And when we solve for this, we will end up having three kilonewtons. Okay, so we got three kilonewtons. But where is this located? Well, it will be located one third from the base. One third from this point. So it will be around here. And the base, since the base is equal to three, the addition of these two, then one third of three is basically one. So we have that it's going to be one meter away from point A. So this is our force, three kilonewtons force. And we say that from here to here, there is one meter. Therefore, from here to here, this should be two meters. What about the distance from here all the way to point B? Well, it's just equal to three meters. All right, so we got everything for our free body diagram. Now all we have to do is something very similar to what we did before on um, on our previous free body diagram, summatory of moments around a point. Well, the best point will be point A, right? Because we won't need AX, we won't need AY. Since we know BX already and we know that this is three kilonewtons, all, our only unknown will be BY. So we got the summatory of moments about my point A, assuming counterclockwise is positive, what do we have? Well, let's just start with our three kilonewtons. So holding in here, these will want to create me a clockwise direction moment. So we got three times the distance, which we know is one meter. Then we have the BX will want to rotate me counterclockwise, therefore we got positive, then we got BX multiplied by the distance. Well, the distance will be three meters from here to where this force is acting, which is basically this point in here, from here to here. So you got three meters. Now the last one is BY. So if we're holding from here, this will want to create me a clockwise, therefore negative BY multiplied by the distance which is equal to three meters as well. And all this should be equal to zero. If we solve for BY, this is going to be equal to BX times three, so 2.25 times three minus three, all divided by three. Okay, and what is this equal to? So if we plug this into our calculator, we will get a total of 1.25 kilonewtons. All right, so now we found our two forces at my point B. So what we're going to do is come here and we're going to cut this member, member AB, and we're going to cut it at D, okay? So if we do that, we're going to have a member from D to B. So we're going to have a free body diagram from D to B. And it will look something like just a horizontal straight line. Okay, so at B, we know that BY is going down and BX is going to the left. Just like in our previous free body diagram. However, we cut at D. So we're going to have a normal internal force that we're going to call it normal at D. We're going to have a shear force that we're gonna call it VD. And we will have a moment around D and we're gonna call it MD, okay? Now, 
what's the distance between D and B? So we can take a look up here. It's equal to 1.5 meters. So we got 1.5 meters in here. The, and then I think we're ready to do our summatorial forces. So if we do summatorial forces in the x direction, summatorial forces in the x, we're going to assume that going to the right is positive. What do we have? Well, we have negative normal at D minus BX, and that's all. So this should be equal to zero. If we solve for normal at D, this is equal to negative BX, which is equal to negative 2.25 kilonewtons. Okay, so we found our normal force. Then we can do our summatorial forces in the y direction. We're going to assume that going up is positive. So what do we have? Well, we got the shear force D, and then we got minus my force BY, and this should be equal to zero. Therefore, my shear force D should be equal to my force BY, which is equal to 1.25 kilonewtons that we found just previously in our step before in here. And last thing we have to do is our summatorial moment. And we're going to choose my moment at point D. We're going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive like always. And what do we have? Well, at my point D, we don't care about VD, we don't care about ND, we don't care about BX because this one is passing also through this, through our point D, meaning there is no distance between force BX and my point D. So all we have to worry about is the moment at D and our force BY. So let's just start with our moment in the D, we draw it to be clockwise, therefore it's negative MD. And then we will have BY. Well, BY, if we're holding at C, this force will want to create me a clockwise. Therefore we have negative BY, which is 1.25 times the distance 1.5 should be equal to zero. If we solve for MD, sorry, not and so MD is equal to negative 1.875 kilonewtons per meter. And if we round it up to two significant figures, we basically will have negative 1.88 kilonewtons per meter. All right, and these are the three answers. So we got the normal forces. We got the shear force and the moment about our point. So if you guys like the video, please push, push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.